Hi, my name is Ray Snezrud. I'm the owner of Water Heaters Now. And today what I want to show you is how to do an annual cleaning on a Renai tankless unit. Now this specific model is a RUR199. And what that means is it is a recirculating unit. So within the unit itself, there's a pump and it'll recirculate your hot water to your most remote fixture, usually in a master bathroom, and bring that water back to the unit to reheat so that in the master area, you'll have hot water when you want it. And it doesn't do that all the time. It actually has a smart learning technology that over two weeks, it'll learn how you use your hot water most frequently. And only at that times will it recirculate. And in that way, you save energy. So it's Wi-Fi enabled. You can control it off your phone. Um, another thing you can do is you could have us as a server so that right from the Wi-Fi, it'll communicate to us, water heaters, now if you have a problem with your heater. So essentially, we'll know if you have a problem before you do. They're pretty cool units. So we're gonna take it apart, we're gonna do the cleaning, and we want you to just take special attention so you can know how to do this yourself year after year and really save the money rather than hiring professionals to come in and do that cleaning. A pro would usually charge $200, $250 a year which is about what you save having a tankless in place. So why would you do that and then commit to paying a pro? If you wanna do that, great, but this video is to serve you so you can save the most money possible and get the longest life out of your unit by keeping it clean. All right, so we'll start by taking these side guards and you just pull them straight away from the heater as such. Set that aside and the same with this. Don't pull them out, that'll break the hook tabs after you have it off at the side, you'll see that these tabs go inside of these loops. So it goes in and comes out from the side of the unit. And after you have both of them removed, there's just four screws to open the front of the heater. Then after you have those screws removed, you pull the bottom out towards you and lift up and the cover is free and you can see the inside of the unit. So this small shiny strip of metal here represents a box of air intake. So your air is coming into the heater, it comes through here and then it feeds the turbo. Before it does, you have a screen that you can just pull out and it'll show you if anything has gotten into your air intake. It's a good idea to clean this. You can see there's a little debris inside. So we'll just take a toothbrush and clean that out dry. Don't use anything wet. Um, it's important that you don't put the screen back in wet. It's stainless steel, but we don't want moisture in the air intake if possible. So I'm just gonna clean that out and reinsert it. So now that that's cleaned off and there's no more debris, we just reinsert that back in to the same slot that it came from. And now we'll go to the bottom of the heater and show you how to service it from there. So now that we have the cover removed, we're gonna go ahead and turn power off to the unit, which is the bottom right button. Just push that and it'll be totally off. Now we're going to isolate the heater from the plumbing system. It's really simple to do. Anybody could do it. So you just turn those two valves so that they make a cross with the pipe or a T and so now no water can come into the heater and no water can come out of the heater. So now these are your service ports, the smaller blue and red valves. We're gonna go ahead and remove the caps. And we're gonna hook up clothes washer hoses to each and then open them, essentially draining the heater. So we'll do that now. Sometimes it's close quarters and it texts your dexterity a little bit and that's not all bad. So we'll get both of those hoses connected, get the other ends into a bucket, and then you can just open them, draining the heater. And we'll let it drain for about five minutes to get everything out of the heater that was in it. So now we're going to take out the cold water inlet filter, 
which when you follow the cold water pipes up, it's this gray filter. So you just take that and loosen it a quarter turn with the pliers, and then it'll be easy to take out with your fingers. And I'll show you the filters are very fine mesh. You just look to see if there's any debris inside of the screen. So you tighten it finger tight and then just give it a little bit of tension with your pliers and that will be adequate. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just take two gallons of normal white vinegar. We're gonna dump that into a bucket where there's a sump pump. It's the standard sump pump. You wanna make sure that you have a garden hose connector on the top. And then what we'll do is we'll connect the hose from the cold water inlet service valve to the pump itself. And then you just set the sump pump into the vinegar. Then we'll give you a closer shot to see what we do underneath the heater for this process. So the pump is in the vinegar and the hose is connected to the pump, the other side of that hose is on the cold side service valve. So essentially we're going to be pumping white vinegar into the cold and the house is isolated here because we don't want to pump vinegar into the house. And then it's going to cycle through the heat exchanger and it's going to come out this port out the hot side service valve which we're just putting that vinegar back into the bucket. So we're creating a cycle and we're just going to pump the vinegar through the system for about a half hour. So now that we have the hoses connected to the heater and we're ready to begin cycling the vinegar through, we just plug it in and you'll hear the motor come on and it's just going to create a loop. So as you can see, the white vinegar is cycling through the unit and we're just pumping it right back into the bucket. So we'll leave that alone and let it do its descaling work just like you do in a bun coffee pot. Okay, so now that the vinegar has been running through the unit an adequate amount of time, you said a half hour, 45 minutes is normal. What we're gonna do is just turn the pump off by unplugging it. We're gonna disconnect the cold side where the vinegar was being pumped in. And what we're gonna do is just flush cold water through the unit for about five, 10 minutes until there's no longer a trace of a vinegar smell in the unit before we bring any water into the house. The service valve is currently in the on position. We're going to turn it off. We're going to disconnect that hose. And then at that point, we're going to open the cold water to the unit and it'll push cold water through and we can eliminate all the old vinegar mix water out of the hot side back into the same bucket. Like I said, usually just a couple of minutes will be adequate. So now we've turned the hot water service valve off because we've purged all the vinegar out of the unit and we're ready to take this hose off. We'll set that aside and now we can replace the caps on the hot and cold side ports. And where the water is concerned, we're ready to reintroduce water into the house. So the cold isolation valve is now feeding the heater. The hot isolation valve is now allowing water to go to the house. And the service valve is closed on both sides. So now when we plug the heater in, it's going to be ready to fire back up. Okay, so now we're at a point where we're ready to turn the water heater back on. So we're going to just push the power button. It's going to fire up. Um, I have asked one of my assistants to go ahead and turn a hot water faucet somewhere on in the house so that it calls for heat because what we want to do is there's a little sight glass in the front of the heat exchanger and we want it to be able to see a nice clean blue flame. So we're going to give you a close up of what you should look for. If the flame itself is yellow or orange, that could be problematic. So as a last point of inspection, you just want to Put your eye down there and it's a really clean blue flame, but I'm going to let the camera show you exactly what that should look like. So at this point, uh, to conclude the video, we're just going to put the cover back on 
and put the aesthetic strips. The heater's up and running. It's got hot water going to different places in the home. So again, there's a latch on top. Connect the latch, move it into place so that the screw holes line up. And that way at the bottom, the window will match the hole in the heater. And then we put in the secure screws and put the strips back in the side and he's back in business.